the state of Italian banks, the market, and the role of European intervention during crisis. These were some of the topics of yesterday's keynote led by ECB member Sabine Lautnerschlager in Florence. The meeting, organized by the Florence School of Banking and Finance, the SESFN Foundation, the Casa di Risparmio di Firenze Foundation, and the European University Institute, recognized the accomplishments of Italian institutions in recent years, their increased profitability, and decreased number of non-performing loans. In her speech, the German ECB representative reiterated that banks, quote, must be able to fail, otherwise the economy will suffer in the long run. The more important the bank is for the real economy, the more interconnected it is with other banks and with the markets, um, the higher the requirements are for the resilience of the bank. So um, the largest banks yeah, in the world, the so-called global systemically relevant banks, they have higher uh, capital requirements. They have higher requirements with regard to risk management in order to make them safer, in order to make them more resilient. Um, and then if they were to fail, yeah, there is more buffer there um, to ensure um, that there is a room um, to rearrange and restructure to resolve the bank. How likely is it that public money will be used in the future to fund the losses of failing banks? In work, um, it is less likely that public funds are used if a bank were to fail. Um, you do have um, capital buffers, um, you have subordinated debt, um, you have the so-called TLEC or EMRA, the minimum um, requirements um, for uh, liabilities which you can bail in. And uh, shareholders and investors have to pay first. They are the ones who have to take losses because they got the risk premium. They uh, reap the benefit yeah, uh, from these um, debt instruments. Could you tell us more about the idea of introducing moratoriums when dealing with failing banks? The supervisor too, um, uh, to create a little bit room to breathe, to find a solution. It freezes in um, the activity of the bank um, with a moratorium um, applied by the supervisor. Uh, nobody, nobody can withdraw assets, um, funds, liquidity anymore uh, from the bank and it is in a kind of you know, freezing in time and during this very short time uh, the shareholders, the owners, um, they can look for a solution. Uh, they can, um, uh, for example, find new shareholders or they can find new sources of liquidity. A moratorium cannot um, uh, be uh, taken or as a solution for every case. Yeah? It is only possible in specific cases. The importance of bank in the market and the progress made by Italian banks in particular over the course of the last four years has also been confirmed by the other speakers. The banks Italian soprattutto sono state al centro dell'attenzione del, del palcoscenico europeo negli ultimi anni. In recent years, Italian banks have garnered significant European attention thanks to the progress made in increasing profitability and decreasing risk. This marks the beginning of a new era of stress tests that will see the Central European Bank in Frankfurt evaluate bank stability on a biannual basis to prevent their failure and ensure their success. Senza le banche non si vive. Lo sostiene anche la nostra relatrice di oggi. There is no life without banks. This belief is also shared and corroborated by our speaker today. Banks are present in every organization and in our capitalist society, banks are absolutely necessary. The health of our banks is paramount to our system in order to keep our economy running fluidly. Sabine Lautenslager's keynote marked the partnership debut between the Sassen Foundation, the Casa di Risparmio di Firenze Foundation, the European University Institute, and the Florence School of Banking and Finance. We are here for 40 years, and so with the community of Firenze, and also with the community of Fiesole, since We've been here for over 40 years. Our offices in Florence and Siena mean we have a strong working relationship with both municipalities. We have ties to the economic
economic world of both cities and therefore with the Casa di Risparmio di Firenze Foundation, with the University of Florence where we have a memorandum of understanding with an exchange of researchers and teachers. We are deeply involved with the local communities and together collaborate with charities including Caritas and Diocesi in Fiesole, working to help integrate refugees in Italian society. There was a need to create a Florence school of banking and finance that would be independent of national beliefs and values and that would offer a platform for learning between academia and the private sector. Quindi nel 2016, grazie anche a un contributo della Fondazione della Casa di Spami di Firenze, siamo riusciti a creare questa scuola con l'obiettivo proprio di formare questa mancanza. In 2016, thanks to a contribution on behalf of Casa di Risparmio di Firenze, we were able to fill the void and create this university in Florence, a city with a long history in banking.